but I did notice that the brake fluid is quite dark. I have to have this truck done tonight because I have to load it up and uh, go drive it all the way to Shannonville as well. Um, intake's off, that's never good. <sighs> For fuck's sakes. Hey guys, welcome back to Piston Head Productions. On today's episode, we are gonna dig into the Suburban Project. So, as I said in the last episode, well, in the introductory episode, um, huge buildup of crap on this. Um, I'm 99% sure it's got an exhaust leak. I took it out for a couple of runs after I fixed this vacuum line. Um, so at idle, the vacuum pump should be producing something and I'm getting zero suction out of this. So I'm 90, I'm super, I'm super sure the vacuum pump is screwed on this thing, which sucks. But that means that I get to build my own Turbo Master. What is a Turbo Master, you ask? Well, a Turbo Master is a fancy name for a uh, manual wastegate spring, basically. So what I'll do is, it's hard to tell um, once I can get in here and remove a few things, but um, essentially, I will take off a lot of this crap and get in here and break open the wastegate, get rid of the wastegate arm, and put in a threaded rod with a hook on it, and then I get to play around with the spring tension to then um, basically get this to boost where I want it. I'll have to figure out a spot for a, a boost reference line. <sighs> Not seeing a super easy to find spot right now, but I'm sure I'll find one. So somewhere up in here, there'll be like a nipple I can tap into, or it's gotta be some type of sensor um, already. So there's, there's obviously something that's going in there. That could be air intake temperature sensor, I'm not sure. Um, what I probably should do before I build one is, uh, is you know, take off the line down there, whatever. Either way, I'm already sick of getting my hands covered in shit. So I mixed together a little home solution of degreaser. I'm gonna spray it on, I'm gonna let it sit overnight. Then I'm gonna go get a uh, can of like good engine degreaser uh, tomorrow. And then I will spray this down once again with that. But for right now, I'm gonna spray my own little homemade concoction on there, let it sit and then I will uh, come back tomorrow, add some more to it, and then we'll clean this thing off. All right, I'll let this stuff sit overnight. Um, works, it's, I'd love to tell you what's in it. I'll tell you a couple things. There's a little bit of vinegar, there's some dish detergent, and then there's another ingredient that's in it that's super safe for engines, super tough on grease, and the EPA doesn't like it. So I'm not gonna tell you what it is. But uh, anyways, I'm gonna let this sit. Um, you can already tell, like in certain spots, it's it's already working, it's magic. Uh, that sticker is already like pretty much clean. Uh, on top of the turbo, this stuff's coming off super easy already, but if I let this soak in, let it work for uh, overnight when I come back tomorrow and spray it off with like the high test crap, should make life a little bit easier. So if I had like a brush or something, I'd get in there and really clean it out, but I'm not that concerned yet. When you get the high pressure stuff in there, it works really well, but. Look at that bubbling action. Will that, will that focus? Come on. Oh yeah, look at that working away. So anyways, I will see you guys tomorrow. Um, I'll try and get all of this stuff together to build a little Turbo Master thing. Kind of pumped for that. Um, I do need to put a boost gauge on it so that way I don't over boost it. For any of these engines with the stock computer, the moment you go over about nine pounds of boost, it gets real angry and decides to go in limp mode. So. We don't want to be doing that, do we? So I will see you guys tomorrow. Okay guys, into the next day. Let's see how she looks. Oh, it doesn't look that much different. Oh, focus. Doesn't look that much different, but uh, I will say it's probably loosened up a fair bit. So now, move on to the heavy duty. Got some real gunk engine de degreaser. Grab a bag quick to throw over the alternator and I'll spray this bad boy down. Okay, all sprayed down. Tried to keep it away from electrical components to the best of my ability. Uh, really soaked down the areas where it was gummed up there. So I'm very curious to see what we're gonna find down in here. Uh, this stuff works really, really well. Probably could have got two cans, but I don't know. I, for some strange reason, I absolutely love cleaning engine bays. Um, I think just cause it's super dirty and it's, it's really not that difficult to do. But now we get to, uh, let it sit and uh, soak and hopefully get into all this crap. Normally I would like to take a brush and really like get in there and, and clean it all out. But at this point, I'm just trying to get off the major gunk and we'll come back with a hose and clean her all up and 
see if we can figure out where the issue is. I'm just hoping it starts after, because I've had that happen before. No fun. So we'll wait 15, 20 minutes and uh, come back and clean her up. Okay, now that I've thoroughly soaked down my engine and made a big puddle, um, it's a little better. Uh, it could probably use a whole nother round of that, but it is what it is. So hoping now I'll start it up. I will uh, let it warm up, hopefully dry off a little bit, and uh, maybe then I'll be able to figure out where the issue is. Important trick here, anytime you're doing this, you'll see you'll get like little bits of white film. Uh, that's usually where the chemical is still sitting. Highly recommend you uh, try and spray that off. Once this stuff kind of gets on there and bakes on there, it gets real nasty and cruddy. So we'll uh, start her up and uh, see, if it, uh, see if it runs first. Well, that's a good start. See if she decides to fire. Can't see any reason why it wouldn't. Okay guys, so the next thing to kind of address in here, because um, I'm waiting on a couple of parts, I ordered a boost gauge, so I don't want to screw around with the turbo too much until I get a boost gauge in, but I did notice that the brake fluid is quite dark. It's not supposed to be that color. It's supposed to be clear of some kind. So I'm going to hopefully drain all of this out. Now, that being said, the brake bleeders on this were pretty corroded. Um, I hit it all with some penetrating lube. Let's see if we can see in here quick. Um, come on, focus. So there's one of the bleeders. That one's probably the best one out of all of them. So I uh, hit it with some lube. I'm gonna give it a couple of taps of the hammer. See if I can start draining some of this fluid out. Okay guys, well this is the best I've got so far. Um, it's at least see-through, kind of. Uh, that is an entire gallon a brake fluid just to do the two fronts. So it shows you how long, I bet you the brake fluid never been done in this, so. Oh man, hopefully that fixes the brake, uh, the brakes being so squishy, but see what happens, but there you go. That's that's them, I'm, I'm out of brake fluids, so it's the best I can do for now. Okay, next thing on the docket is to see if we can take out some of that steering slop. Now, this is gonna be real tough. Let me see if I can zoom in. Enhance, enhance. Okay, see that bolt there right in the middle? Come on, focus. See that bolt there right in the middle? I'm gonna butcher this, but from my understanding, that sets the preload on the steering box, um, and sometimes the springs wear out and you gotta have a little more preload. I was warned only to do a quarter turn at a time. Uh, so I'm probably just gonna do a quarter turn, maybe take the truck out for a quick drive, see if that uh, does it, and then if not, come back and add a little bit more. I was heavily, heavily warned not to do too much because I could break the spring inside and then I'm shit out of luck and then no towing this weekend. So I'll clean that off and see if I can take some of the slop out. Okay, I didn't even think, I probably should have shown you what the slop looked like before I started and after, but here's what my arm looks like. That sucked. Um, all kind of working on diesels. Totally forgot what it's like working on diesels. But I gave it about a quarter turn. So now it's time to test it out and See what that did. Hopefully there's much less slop. That door handle's gotta get fixed. Um. I would definitely say there's less, still a lot. So I might give it just a touch more, not a lot, don't worry. I'm freaking out, I'm gonna break it. I probably will, or whatever. Uh, and then the other thing I'm gonna do to maybe help take out some of the slack is uh, I'm gonna grease up the tie rods and stuff because they look like they need it. Okay, now that everything's all greased up, the next task is going to be, um, oh, that's already coming off. Taking off the old wastegate on here so I can build a Turbo Master. Um, trademark. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, so what I've done is I took off the old uh, wastegate. I'll clean this up a little bit, but took out everything, took out all the guts. I'm gonna drill, punch this out, and then put a rod through. Learned this from a YouTuber. Oh, I can't remember who. If I remember, I'll put the name of the guy in uh, on the screen. But uh, anyways, got a nice long bolt that'll go through that. And hopefully, that's all I need. Well, I know I need to do more than that, but that's the idea. Okay, since nobody really, well, that I've found, I'm not gonna say nobody, I have no idea how much spring pressure I need, so I grabbed a couple of these small ones, figuring, okay, well, that's a decent amount. It's not a ton, but give it a shot. Worst case, I do have a stronger spring, so at least this way, when I drive it, the wastegate's not just fluttering. So I'll try this one. If, uh, if this works, then perfect. Um, if not, then move on to a bigger spring. Now, I can't really test it until tomorrow, because I don't have a boost gauge and these engines are notorious for not wanting to go over a certain PSI. So we'll start off like this. Worst case, I'll bottom these springs out. I can go a fair bit and then uh, go from there. Well, my idea, well, my idea, somebody else's idea works. Problem is the rod I got isn't long enough because I'm pretty much bottomed out right there. So <sighs> back to the drawing board because that's not gonna work. I need the wastegate to be able to open up almost all the way. <sighs> for fuck's sakes. Okay guys, we are back. It's another day. It's uh, it's raining, so that sucks. So all I did is I got a piece of quarter inch threaded rod, got it, bent it in there, um, so it was super snug, so this will not come out. I'm not impeding movement at all, which is good. I've got a little bit of preload on the spring. I can go either direction a fair bit and not impede anything. I've got another spring that I can throw in there that's a lot heavier, and I can take these out to make them looser. So I'm hoping with all of this, that should do it. So the only thing now I need to do is hook up a boost gauge to see how that will affect things. Uh, I may just throw the intake and everything back together and fire it up and test it and see if, uh, if I notice anything weird. Okay, so this will be the first fire up with the wastegate now officially wanting to work properly. I don't have a boost gauge, so I'm not gonna drive it, but I will uh, at least fire it up and see what happens. So here we go. Come on. wondering where we're at with it well um, intakes off that's never good I need to put a nipple on I know that there is a kit that it's like a bolt and it has a threaded set anyways I didn't have what I need so we were gonna tap and put a nipple fitting in um, didn't have the proper stuff here sent it to a buddy's shop to get it done he went to do it had an issue stripped the thread so now it's in kind of JB welded doesn't matter I've got it um, I now have to put this back on, so that's cool. Um, I got the majority of the wiring done for the trailer brake controller. Um, so the plug's down there. Uh, the unit is here. So I'll get to install that today. Got the boost cage there. Um, I found this old pod. It's from the Audi. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you can check back to our old Audi video. But um, I don't know how I'll make that work. I might be able to. If not, the boost gauge will live in there. And just as a quick, um, just so you know, I have to have this truck done tonight because I have to load it up and uh, go drive it all the way to Shannonville. So if you're new to the channel, we're big into drifting and this is my tow rig for the drift car. So yeah, kind of need to do that. Um, I have tonight to do it and that's about it. Finally got the weight distribution hitch on with the proper uh, ball hitch. I've got uh, this connector, which is a four to seven, but I still need to add the trailer brake wire uh, That is currently living underneath the vehicle. So I have to pull that all the way back um, Zip tie it into place and go from there. So That is my plan once that's done I'll be able to load this beast up and uh, get it ready for drifting once again if you're new to the channel This is the drift car 1988 uh, Ford Thunderbird. We call it the drift chicken so uh, there's a build series going on with this. Make sure to check that out as well. Still got a little bit of work to do with this to get it ready to go, but it's pretty much there. So yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a unique beast. So anyways, um, sorry for the wind. For the next little bit, it'll be get the truck ready because I can always get the car ready at the track if I need to. So truck ready, load everything up, and hopefully good to go for tomorrow.
Okay guys, everything's back together. Um, I think it's back, yeah, it's all back together. So now I'm just gonna take it for a quick drive and see if we're making boost on those tiny springs. Okay, truck made a rock steady, like five to six pounds. Um, it's right where I want it. It spiked a little bit every once in a while, but you know what, I'm not gonna play with it. I don't know the quality of this engine. I've already found a lot of surprises, so I think that's pretty much what I'm gonna do. Um, yeah, uh, I apologize if, uh, well, this is this is my first episode on this one. I, in all honesty, I, I, I cut things real short as per usual, had to get the truck done so I can make it out to a drifting event. So I'm gonna pack the truck up, uh, get everything ready because I leave tomorrow at five o'clock. Um, if you're new to the channel, if, if you came here because, because of the truck, uh, there'll be lots more on this. I have lots of plans for it. Uh, I'm gonna try and get some companies involved as well so you can see some really cool installs. Um, if you are new here, check out the Drift Chicken series. That is what is behind me, my 1988 Ford Thunderbird drift car. Um, yeah, make sure to check that out. And yeah, thanks again for watching, guys. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit the little things, check out some cool videos, and uh, yeah, we'll be back next time. We'll see you then.